Hello, this is Justin from MotoCookie.com and today we're going to be discussing the process that involves baking normal maps. Of course, when you, uh, when you hear the word normal maps, you probably think about games. Well, normal maps are used for games uh, in most of the, of the cases, but they're also used to um, to lift the weight of the of the geometry so basically you use them to enhance the detail of a model uh, as I've done here I have two separate objects a low polygon model and a high polygon model and this is supposed to be a some part of a furniture something I did uh, really fast. I'm not going to cover the, the process of creating this piece of geometry. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to bake the normal map. So as you can see here this uh, piece has almost 20,000 polygons and the high one has close to 1600 uh, I'm sorry to 600,000 polygons so if imagine you had uh, this in a scene uh, an interior or a house or I don't know any 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 heavy scene and this is just a piece so 600,000 polygons is a bit too much so the way we're gonna we're gonna do this is we create first we we create the high polygon model and based on that we create the low polygon model which is the bare minimum that you need to 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 still get that detail so i've created um an example here like i said it's some type of furniture cushion or whatever you want to call it it's just for the for the for example purposes and you can probably see in the header image of the tutorial that the difference between the two is not that big so let's see how we do this beforehand i want to mention that um uh, just just like the ambient occlusion bake your low polygon model needs to have a UV map and this is pretty simple it's a planar projection and the high polygon model doesn't need to have a UV map of course you can UV it if you want to do some special textures and then bake them but it, for this example is is not <coughs> sorry it's not necessary so with the low polygon model or object selected make sure you have the UV map selected and then over to the images these are uh, remainders from my previous tests <coughs> let me get a drink We're going to go to add clip <coughs> and new image. And I'm just going to create it on desktop here. And we're going to call this image normals. And we're going to save. And we do want the resolution to be 1024 and the format RGB or RGBA. It doesn't really matter since the geometry is occupying. Uh, basically the whole UV space and click OK and then in the shader tree we're gonna select the low polygon model and we're gonna assign a material just gonna call it low the settings of the material are not important for the baking process so I'm gonna add an image here I'm gonna use the clip browser I'm gonna add the normals and next 
if you have the low polygon model selected, make sure you have the low map selected, and all you have to do is click, uh, right click the image in the shader node and bake from object to texture. And next you're going to see that it, it asks for distance. This distance is, uh, it means how much the rays have to travel before they stop. The distance is scene dependent so it, it depends on the scene and on the object that you want to bake. For my um, scene that distance is 100, and mil 100 millimeters. So I'm just gonna click OK and it's gonna start baking. And you're gonna notice that we're getting a white image. Well that's because the image that we created needs to be set to um, to normal. It's, for some reason it doesn't let me doesn't let me <laughs> select it and I have no idea why. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> it was stuck because I tried to move the viewport while that window was active. So I'm gonna set here to surface shading normal. And we're gonna repeat the process. So bake from object to texture, it remembered the distance, and click OK. And you're gonna see that we have our normal map. And in order to view this in real time on our model, we're gonna go back to the model tab here. It could be done in the UV tab, but I like this one because it's wider, it's bigger. And I'm gonna hide the high polygon model, and again you're gonna see that nothing happens. Well, that's because we need to switch to excuse me on uh, to switch to advanced OpenGL and to view better we're gonna toggle off the wireframe and this is our normal map now some of you might say that well this is not looking uh, identical or it's not looking like the one in the header well that's because in order to achieve the closest result to the high polygon model, you would also need to have an ambient occlusion map applied usually on top of the diffuse texture. So like we did in the ambient occlusion tutorial, now we're gonna repeat the process since I kind of forgot to show you there. Uh, we're gonna bake the detail from the high polygon model to the low polygon UV. So we're gonna bake the ambient occlusion information from the high polygon model to the low polygon model. And this process is done the same. You make sure you have your low polygon object selected and your low polygon or actually your uh, low UV map and then in the shader tree, um, I already had an ambient occlusion output added, and the range is 25 millimeters for the optimum result. And next, we have to change our frame width and height to match. So 1024 should be OK. And next, what we have to do is just go over to the render tab. It's just off frame here. and bake from object to render outputs and again the distance needs to be a hundred millimeters and it's also gonna bake the final color output but we're not interested in that we're interested in the ambient occlusion output which is gonna bake in just a second here and once this is baked uh, we can save it out and we can apply it to our model. 
but like I said, if you use a diffuse texture, you might want to go over to Photoshop or you can also do it in Moto. You might want to use this on multiply over the diffuse texture. Now in some cases the detail uh, doesn't really transfer properly using just the normal map. So in some cases there might be the need for a displacement map which is obtained just as the um, normal map except that you select displacement instead of normal. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.